Okay, in this video we're going to be going over problem 3D2 in Separations Process Engineering by Wayne Cat, the 4th edition. The problem reads, a distillation column separating ethanol from water is shown on the following figure. Pressure is 1 kilogram per centimeter cubed. Instead of having a reboiler, 100 kilograms per minute of saturated steam, pure water vapor, is injected directly into the bottom of the column to provide heat. Feed rate is 100 kilograms per minute of 30 weight percent ethanol at 20 degrees Celsius. Reflux is a saturated liquid. Distillate concentration is 60 weight percent ethanol and bottoms product is 5 weight percent ethanol. What is the external reflux ratio L over D? So I'm going to draw this out really quick. We have a distillation column with a feed stream. We have steam coming into the bottom, bottoms coming out of the bottom. The vapor stream is going to a condenser, which is split into reflux and a product stream. So the feed is given. It is 100 kilograms a minute at 30 weight percent ethanol. We have 100 kilograms of saturated steam per minute, which is at 0 weight percent ethanol because of the steam. We don't know the flow rate of the bottoms. We know the weight fraction is we know the weight fraction of ethanol is 0 0.05. We don't know the flow rate of our vapor stream or the weight fraction of the ethanol. We're going to have heat leaving the system at the condenser. Then we have the reflux stream, which we don't know the flow rate or the weight fraction there. And then we have the distillate stream, and the weight fraction is going to be 0.6. And since we know that the weight fraction here is 0.6, we actually know that this weight fraction is 0.6 and this weight fraction is 0.6 because there's no separation happening at any point over here. So we want to find all the mass balances and all the energy balances that we can do on this system so that we know kind of what we're dealing with. So if we do an overall balance, we're looking at the entire system. So essentially we have a box going around here and none of this stuff that's happening at the condenser matters. We're only looking at what's going in and what's going out of the entire system. So if we did a mass balance, we would have the feed stream plus the steam is equal to the distillate plus the bottoms. We can also do an ethanol balance. So we have F times the weight fraction in ethanol plus S times the weight fraction of ethanol, D times the weight fraction of ethanol plus B times the weight fraction of ethanol. So each of these streams is the total mass flow of the stream times the weight fraction of that stream of which is ethanol, which means it's the total amount of ethanol coming into that stream. And so like the total mass going in is equal to the total mass out, the total mass of ethanol in is going to be the total mass of ethanol out. We can also do an energy balance on the overall system where each stream carries a specific amount of energy. We can also do an energy balance where each stream is carrying some amount of energy and then we also have our energy leaving the system through the condenser. So these H terms have all been determined experimentally in the past, and so we're going to be able to determine them based on the composition of the streams and the temperature of the streams, and we'll look at that further into the problem. And we can also do a bounce around the condenser. So basically anything coming in and out of the condenser becomes our system. So we can do a mass balance. V is equal to L plus D. And then for our energy balance, VH plus QC is equal to LHL plus DHD. So looking at just these first two equations, we have F, which we know, S, which we know, we know Z, we know YS, this is actually zero, and we know XD, and we know XB. So we have two unknowns in two equations. So with these two equations, we're going to be able to solve for D and B. And again, this problem is asking for L over D, which is the external rate, uh, which is the external reflux ratio. Um, so we'll be able to find D. We just need to be able to find L. And then I would hope we'd be able to get L over D by dividing L by D. So looking at this third equation, we know F, we know S, we know D, we know B. And we're going to be able to find all of these enthalpy terms using an enthalpy composition diagram. And so QC is our only unknown, and so we'll be able to solve for QC using this equation. So looking at these last two equations, we have two unknowns, L and V, and we have two equations. So we should be able to solve for L and V from these equations. And then we'll have L and we'll have D, so we can find L over D, which is what the problem is asking for. So before we start, we want to go and collect all the enthalpy terms using the enthalpy composition diagram. So this is a graph of enthalpy as a function of concentration and temperature for an ethanol and water system at the specified pressure in the problem. And this is going to be figure 2-4 in your book. And so I'm going to go through stream by stream and just show you how to find each enthalpy term. So for the feed stream, we're given it's 30 weight percent ethanol at 20 degrees Celsius. 
So if you go down here, we have the concentration is going to be 0.3, and we want to find where this intersects with the 20 degree line, which is going to be right here. And then the enthalpy value essentially is going to be the y value of this point. So if we come across horizontally, we see it hits about right here. And so our HF is going to be approximately 10 kilocals per kilogram. It says it is saturated steam, which means it's going to be along this dew line. And we know that the steam is at zero weight percent ethanol. So we know we're at zero. And so if we go to the intersection between the Y axis and the dew line, we're going to get our value. It's about 640. And this is going to be our HS. And for our bottom stream, we know it's in equilibrium because it's coming off of the bottom stage. So everything leaving a stage in the distillation column is going to be equilibrium. And so we know the bottoms is a saturated liquid, and we know that it is at 5 weight percent ethanol. So if we come to where around 5% would be, and then we go up to a saturated liquid, which is right here. And then again, we come across, and we get an H value of around 95 kilocals per kilogram. So it's going to be HB. And for a vapor stream, it's going to be the same thing. So the vapor stream is leaving the top stage of the distillation column, so it's in equilibrium with the liquid that's going from the top stage to the second to top stage of the distillation column. And so we know that it's a saturated vapor, which means that it's going to fall on the dew line. And we already know that the weight fraction is going to be 0.6. So if we go to 0.6 and we go all the way up to the dew line, it's about right here and it looks like it's going to be about 410 kilocals per kilogram. So we have HV. And finally, for our reflux and our distillate stream, they're both going to have the same value because they are essentially the same stream. We know the distillate concentration is 68% ethanol, and we know that the reflux is a saturated liquid. So we can go to 60% and go up to a saturated liquid, which is at the boiling line, and then coming across one last time and we get an H value of about 60 and this is for HD. Now we're going to go through and solve everything like I described earlier from the mass balance and energy balances on both the overall system and the condenser system. So first we have F plus S equals D plus B and FZ equals D XD plus B XB because remember the weight fraction of S is zero so there's no ethanol in the, in the steam stream, so it's not in the ethanol balance. So the best thing to do is solve this equation for either D or B. So we can say B is equal to F plus S minus D. And then we plug this B into this equation. So we have FZ equals D X D plus F plus S minus D X B. And so plugging everything in, we have 100 times 0.3 is equal to D.6 plus 100 plus 100 minus D times 0 0.05. So if we solve this for D, we're going to get 36.36 kilograms per minute. And then we can plug this D back into this top equation where we have 100 plus 100 is equal to 36 .36 plus B, and we find that B is equal to 163.63 kilograms per minute. So next we have the overall energy balance, FHF plus SHS plus QC equals DHD plus BHB. So we have 100 times 10 plus 100 times 640 plus QC is equal to 36.36 times 60 plus 163.63 times 95. And remember all these H values we found using the enthalpy temperature composition chart. And after plugging everything in, you should get QC is equal to 4.72 times 10 to the fourth kilocals per minute. And so moving on to our last set of equations, we have V equals L plus D and then V1, H1, plus QC equals LHD plus DHD. And we have these two enthalpy terms to be the same because the stream was just physically split with no change to composition and no change to temperature. So now we can plug our V into here and we have L plus D H plus QC equals LHD plus D HD and plugging everything in we have L plus 36.36 times 405 plus 4.72 times 10 to the 4 
equals L plus 36.36 times 60. And so if you solve for L, you should get L is equal to 100.72 kilograms per minute. And so L over D is equal to 100.72 over 36.36. .36. And so L over D, our external reflux ratio is going to be equal to 2.77.